So in the last video, we had our web app up and running, but we've got now two instances of the web app. When we visit this page, which of the nodes are we actually visiting? What I'm about to show you here is something called the Docker Mesh. On Play With Docker, it's not that easy to demonstrate this, and we will see this much more clearly when we move across to EC2 in the next chapter. Select any of your nodes. I'm going to go for this one because I've not really used it before. You'll see from the prompt actually that each of these nodes has their own private IP address, such as 10.0.76.6 for me. Now, that's a private IP address. You can't visit that in a browser. But what's happening if I hover over the 80 here at the top, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit there to make that clearer, what they've given you is a domain name. In my case, it's PWT, and then we're seeing that IP address again, 10 dash naught, they've just put dashes in for the dots, dash 76 dash six. So every one of my nodes has its own address. If I switch to this one here, this manager, this one has a private IP address ending in dot five. And if I hover over the eight to here, notice that we do actually have a different address here. So you might be thinking, if I go back to the manager, you might be thinking that if I click that link, all that's happening here is we're, see we're visiting the instance that's running on this particular node. But actually, if I do a Docker container ls, it's purely by accident. I didn't plan this, but there are no containers running on this node. So the web app must be running somewhere else. If I do a Docker container ls on this second node, now there's nothing running there either. Playing hunt the container here, if we go to the uh, third one, yeah, we have an instance running on this one. And then I'll go to the fourth one. That's the database. So the other instance must be running on this one. So the point of that is, notice that it actually doesn't matter which of these addresses I visit. That's the first of them, which is the IP address ending in three. Here's the second of them. I still get the web app. And here, I still get the web app. It doesn't matter which of the nodes we visit directly. What Docker's automatically doing is it's routing the request to one of the containers that's publishing port 80. In other words, it's doing a kind of load balancing. From request to request on any of these addresses, doesn't matter which I use, on any of these addresses, I'm getting one container or the other container. And I don't know which is which. It means that using Docker Swarm, we have an automatic load balancing system without the need potentially for other external load balancers such as Amazon ELB. Docker's implementing this via a feature that it calls its routing mesh. Well, here in the UK, we pronounce it routing. You might pronounce it routing, of course. It's worth putting up a picture to review what Docker's doing here because it's really clever and really elegant. So here's a picture of a swarm which has, for example, four nodes. And we've been deploying a stack to it. And the current state is it's fairly random. We have node one here, which is the address ending in dot two four, which has had our Java container deployed to it. Now it's a Java container running a web application. And let's say it's stand standard Tomcat. So it's exposing port 8080. As I hope you know by now, that does not mean that port 8080 is visible to the public. That port is only visible within our private network, the private overlay network. If this container wanted to ping this container's port 8080, that would be fine. If this container wants to ping this container's port 3306, that's fine too. In fact, that's exactly what we're doing in our system. Our web app container 
is contacting the database container on port 3306. But a really important concept that I cannot get across strongly enough is that these ports are only visible to other containers on that overlay network. They're not visible to the public. The only way we can make a port visible to the public, as we've seen, is by publishing the ports. That mapping, either using the dash p command line argument, or as we've been doing in our Docker Compose file, we're mapping port 80 to the internal port of port 8080. And that makes port 80 open to the public. By the way, it's also worth mentioning we have a node here running a MySQL container, port 3306, and another container here running another MySQL container. For some reason, we've replicated it. It's absolutely fine to have multiple internal container ports, which are the same. That's absolutely fine. But we can only publish one of each port. That's so important. Now, what we've seen in the previous demonstration is that if a browser comes along, that's supposed to be a browser, believe it or not. And if the browser types in the IP address of 32.68.89.102, and they're going to go for the default port 80, there's nothing special about this node. It just doesn't happen to have any containers running on it, but it could have done. But the important thing is there is no web app container running on this node. But as you've seen now, what will happen seamlessly in the background is that request will be routed or routed to a node that does have port 80 published. And all of that will happen seamlessly in the background. So this container will respond with data which will then get returned back to the user's browser. So that means you have a lot of flexibility. Now it's beyond the scope of the course as to how you would actually use this in practice. It might be that you just set up one of these IP addresses to your website's domain name, for example, or you might apply some external load balancing on top of this, and you might use more than one of these addresses on that external load balancer. Lots of different ways you can use this in practice, but it's a very clever setup. It's called the routing or routing mesh. As always, there's a full page of this on the reference manual. Do check out that if you're interested. One important point that we will need for future chapters is that to make all of this work, you do need a couple of ports open on your firewall. I won't look into detail on that just yet. We'll do that when we go to EC2, but it would be worth remembering that that work's going to be needed later. Clearly, on the Play With Docker, they've already configured these ports appropriately.